Hello fellow entrepreneurs, my name is Nicole Johnson of Digital Made Simple, a branding, graphic design, and digital marketing strategy firm. Well, I wanted to share this video with you because recently I shared some pictures around how I revamped and redesigned my Dubsado portal in order to make it easier for my clients to understand how to access the information I was sharing with them, as well as make sure that it was consistent with the rest of my branding. And I'm, te I'm telling you, I got an overwhelming response of people who were really interested um, in how I did this, um, was really appreciative of the style and things like that that I implemented with my Dubsado rebrand. So I figured I would create a video that would help you understand my process and some of the tips and tricks that I learned in order to ensure that everything was consistent and, and well branded. This video will help you understand how to not only design your Dubsado portal banners, also associated emails that you can use to share with your clients on how to use the Dubsado portal and sections and graphics that can be used throughout additional forms that you may have throughout your Dubsado site. So let's get started and hope you learn a lot. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the file that I use to generate my graphics. So what I used in order to generate my graphics was Photoshop. Now a lot of you may not have access to Photoshop or you have access to Photoshop and are still maybe intimidated by using Photoshop because it is a industry standard for graphic design um, and photo manipulation. So if you don't have Photoshop or if you don't want to use Photoshop, then certainly you can use something like Canva. You can use Adobe Spark. You can do use any of the online and mostly free resources to generate your graphics but it's important to understand kind of the sizing that I use. And I know a lot of people were, had a lot of questions around what size were the different uh, items. And most of the sizing I got from reading some of the support articles in Dubsado, as well as some of the videos and uh, Facebook live sessions that Dubsado put out. So the portal banner should be 1800 by 200. And so I have that here. So this is the portal banner. Um, the mobile banner should be 760 by 200. Uh, the hero image for any of your forms should be 2000 by 930. And then the section dividers can be 2000 by 110. Now I'll go into that a little bit later about the section dividers and how I use those. Now, the first thing I will say is what I'm showing you, the example that I'm showing you is one of our Dubsado members uh, reached out to me and asked me about recreating and rebranding her Dubsado. And so her name is Lauren and she's with Captivating Calligraphy. Beautiful work, beautiful uh, branding. And so in order for me to do this so quickly and efficiently, she had to provide me a few things, one of them being her brand guideline. Thank goodness she had a really strong, clear, cohesive brand guideline for her brand, which included her logos, her colors, her typography. And with that information and a few pictures and textures that she shared with me, I was able to come up with the following designs. So once I um, changed the overlay, get the size overlays off of this, this is what I came up with for captivating calligraphy. Now I'm going to be referring to some of my notes as you can see. So if you see me looking away, it's not because I'm not paying attention to you, it's because I'm, you know, wanting to make sure that I don't miss anything. So basically what we did was created a client portal banner. This banner is going to go right at the top of the portal so that people know where they are. So it says, welcome to your client portal and has her branding and some of the graphics that she shared with me, as well as some of the graphics that I obtained from her social media or Instagram channels. Now they provide, they tell you to create a portal banner as well as a mobile banner. Now, one of the things that I will say about the portal banner versus the mobile banner is don't try to squish every single thing in the portal banner uh, for the desktop into your mobile banner. It should be a good 
kind of modification of it, but still consistent with your branding. So as you can see, you know, the picture of her is not on there, but you, you try to make sure that you're putting the most important, most representative images in your mobile banner from a priority standpoint versus trying to really fit everything from the desktop banner uh, into the mobile one because you have clearly a lot less space. So then what you will do is also create a header or a hero image for your portal guideline. And so when you're sharing with your clients, hey, you have this client portal, you can access it anywhere, here's the way to access it, then you have this beautiful image up top so that it welcomes and invites your clients in and they understand that, hey, you're very professional, very top notch, and things are consistent with your branding. I also developed section dividers so that as the different sections of your Dubsado um, information and your guideline are talked about, there's clear separation of them using these images. And again, consistent with her brand colors, her logos, her fonts, and things like that, I was able to develop the uh, dividers so that we can really separate the information out much more clearly. Also, you may wonder why um, the content and the imagery is only filling half of this available space and the rest of it, when you see these checker marks, that means it's transparent. Because when you import images into Dubsado, it will default to filling the available space 100%. So if I were to uh, make this particular divider shorter just to fit the content, when I imported it into Dubsado, it would stretch it. Um, it wouldn't necessarily stretch it, but it would make it bigger. It wouldn't distort it, but it would stretch it to fill the 100% width of the space. And I would have to manually go in and adjust the percentage that it um, took up. And it may center it and things like that, um, which may not be things that I really intended. So I made sure that the uh, size of the portal uh, section dividers was 2000 so it's consistent with the size of the hero image now you'll see a lot better what I'm talking about in this piece of it when we actually start filling out her client portal guide and we'll be getting into that very soon but basically what you have are what I use is artboards. I use artboards very extensively because you can create different artboards of different sizes in one document and not have to worry about, you know, creating co completely different documents because you're using different sizes. And so once I've created all of my images at the correct size, all I have to do is go to file, export artboards to files, and then browse to the right uh, folder that I want to put everything in. Um, you can export selected artboards, but if you want to just export everything, you can uncheck this, export the artboard content only, make sure it's PNG. Um, if you were going to use something that went all the way across and was completely filled and there was no transparent pixels that you wanted to keep in the document, then you could use JPEG and that would reduce the size of the file significantly because JPEGs are compressed files. Um, but if you wanted to make sure that you have the transparency, you're gonna have to do PNG. So once all of these selections are uh, made, also um, the prefix, you can add a prefix, you can um, just create something that says dubs. And what will happen is when these files are exported, your file name will be dubs underscore portal banner, dubs underscore mobile banner. And that's how it will be exported into whatever file folder that you wanted to use as your destination. So that's basically it. You would hit run and then you would have all the files you need to start updating your Dubsado portal and associated forms.
So now let's mosey on over to Dubsado, where we can make the adjustments to the portal associated with the design we've just made. Now, when you first log into Dubsado, your dashboard may look a little different than this, um, but that depends on how you've customized your account. Um, where we're going to go first is the gear icon for settings. Okay, we're going to go to portal. And as you can see, when I first logged in, um, all of these things were set up like this. And what I've done is made sure that I click hide the welcome message as well as hide logo in your portals because the design that I created already has the logo and already has a welcome message embedded in it. So then all you're going to do, I'm going to exit out of these for now and show you exactly what you need to do. So for the portal banner, here you have the general banner for desktop view. Upload, and we're gonna get the portal banner image. You see that it's 1800 by 200, which is recommended, and hit choose. Then you're gonna get the mobile device banner. Choose that one. Okay, so then we have both the portal banner for desktop and for mobile here, and we've hidden the welcome message and the logo. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this link for the portal and hit save. Now, what I also did to make sure that I can take a look at the portal banner um, in context before I send this to my clients is I set up a test account um, inside my projects and made sure that I could just log in with my email address. And so with this link, you can come over here and paste that link here and it'll show your portal login. Before I actually put in my email address, I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of this image and I'll show you why in a few minutes. Okay, so that screenshot is available. All right, now I'm gonna put in my email address. I didn't put a password associated with this test account, so um, I'm just gonna hit log in. And now you see, portal banner is sits very nicely up here. It doesn't have an overlay of any welcome messages or additional logos, and you can see very clearly where everything is. Now, while I'm here, I'm also going to take a few more screenshots because um, these screenshots are going to be useful when you're developing your client portal guide. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this home page. And of the documents page. emails page and the profile page. Okay, so again, these are going to be useful a little bit later. So let's go back to Dubsado. And now we have this information in the portal and people will, once they come to their portal, will see that, that new updated graphics. Now we're gonna actually look into updating the client portal guide. So you, don't, you see that there's no client portal guide set up yet, but if you want to set one up and don't want to have to do it from scratch, you can go to the template library and see that they have a client portal guide there as well. Now you see a laundry list of templates, very helpful. I've looked through several of them and say, oh, I could be using more of these. Um, and all you have to do is kind of filter it by quest questionnaire to make the list a little bit uh, smaller 
and go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see the client portal guide here. Go ahead and preview it so that you can see kind of what you're working with. You see this big image is probably going to be appropriate for the larger image that we created in Photoshop. Um, and here is where I wanted to bring your attention to the screenshots that we made. So currently, if you use the client portal guide as a template as is, it will have their branding in it. It'll have kind of the way that their portal looks. If you wanted to use your portal's design, then you those screenshots that we just took will come in handy. You can use some of their images and things like that, but generally I'm using my own images. You see here that they have kind of like a video as well. And this is really just a GIF, um, an animated GIF that they incorporated. You don't have to do this. I did not use this animated GIF for mine at all. Um, but if you are going to, if you need some guidance or to provide some guidance to your clients on how to upload things into the file uploader, then that's exactly what you can use. Um, but yeah, everything else here is pretty straightforward. All right, so then what you're gonna do is hit copy to account. And that's it, you've got the client portal guide, and then you're gonna start adjusting this client portal guide to fit your needs. Um, the text that is in bold is usually notes for you, uh, the designer or the entrepreneur, to give guidance on how these sections can be used. They're very helpful. But what you definitely want to do is delete them before you actually send this to other people. So I am, I've read through this. Make sure you read through it and get the information you need. Um, but I just generally delete any of these. because I'm not going to be providing that information to my clients. We've got the home page. And so you see where it says portal login here. We're going to delete that. Um, and we're going to delete a lot of the headings. The first thing you're going to want to do is actually take this image and you're going to Click on it and you're going to actually upload all of these images from what we created into your image gallery. So we're going to need this one. We are going to need all of these. Getting everything. For the section headers. Okay, um, and I believe that's it. Um, we took a picture of the portal login, the branded portal login. So I'm gonna move that on over. Okay, and I think that should be it from what we exported from, what we exported from Photoshop. Okay. So the first thing you're going to make is this welcome guide. First, you got to hit upload all. And once all of those are uploaded, you can go ahead and replace that hero image, the banner image, with the one that we created. Close. Looks very nice. Okay. Um, I'm not going to be adjusting any of her copywriting. She will be doing that a little bit later. But what I will do is start adjusting the section headers and some of the screenshots. So this is the start of a new section. And I am going to actually add an image block here. Click this, and because this next section is just talking about the portal login, I want the portal login section here. So you kind of have to click through them because it's hard to see. Now, before I put this in there, um, actually, I'll show you what it looks like. You see it fits very nicely um, in this space for the portal login. It's halfway across, exactly what we wanted. Now, if I would have used 
Um, what I mentioned before is making the uh, size of the section headers without that extra transparent space. If I would have done that, um, I'm going to show you what it would look like. Let's see. If I find F. Okay. So when I created the portal login and I just made it the size of the actual image, you see how large it is? It fits 100% by default of the available space. And if you don't want that section header to be that big, um, you would have to adjust the width here to maybe take it down to 50% um, and then align it to the right in order for it to show up the way that you want it. OK, but to avoid those extra clicks and those extra steps, I just created the portal login and any of the section headers with the empty transparent space as part of the image um, so that it's actually sized the exact way that I want it to be sized. And then it fits perfectly where it needs to go. I'm going to go ahead and change this to the branded one, right? When I look at it, I still feel like it's a little large for the space. So I'm going to go back into the image and maybe make it 80% of the width. I like it being centered. That's fine. Um, and by default, it is centered. And so now it looks like this. So again, the um, screenshots of the areas where you made screenshots in the portal um, will be added in these remaining spaces. So we'll just go to where my screenshots are, the home page. What we're going to do is click here. I'm going to drop all of these images in, upload them all. all right. And we're going to select this one to be the next one. Close. So this reflects what the client portal would look like once they logged in. All right. This still seems a little bit big to me. I'm going to take this down to 60%. All right. I like that better. All right. There. So again, you would continue on replacing images with images from your portal, uh, making sure that if you want to detail something that's in the documents folder, uh, that there's content in there to, to detail. Um, if you wanted to keep this, again, deleting any of the bolded text that are notes for you personally um, and adjusting everything like that. So that's it. I'm not going to go through and, and do everything else, um, but you get the, the point, which is replacing the images with your images is going to make your client portal guide look very professional and branded to you. Now, once you have everything uploaded, all the pictures and the screenshots that you need uploaded, we're going to assume that I've done that. Um, what I found is that I liked that when someone came to the client portal and was on the home page, um, but when they came to the home page, I liked for the client portal guide to be one of the first things they saw. Now, here's a couple of things that I've noticed about Dubsado. One, if you do not have a field on a form, then once you add that form to a client's job, then it will automatically be completed. It will automatically be a completed form because there's nothing for them to fill out, nothing for them to do. So it would not appear on the home tab. It would only appear in the documents tab and it would be complete. I felt like that was a little bit confusing because people are looking at these documents as if they need to do something or they don't need to do something. And if there's a form somewhere in their portal that says incomplete, then they're more likely to actually open it up, read it and do something with it. And if it says complete, then they're probably not going to do anything. So I made sure that I added a field here at the bottom. And I said, 
um, I have read and understood the information provided. Yes or no. You can even make this a required field if you want to, um, but you know, or you can leave it unrequired. But basically, this allows that question to be asked. And if that field is available, then there's going to be a submit button. And that's my submit button on my personal Dubsado account says, I've read this, you know, something, you know, more of a call to action. Um, yes, I've read this. Or if you even want to do something as as far as um, if you select no, then I have additional questions. If no above, please provide additional questions you may have. All right. And so then they can say, okay, I didn't quite understand this. I didn't quite understand that or my login's not working, et cetera, whatever. Um, but they will see that they can provide additional feedback on the client portal form if you want them to put that as a response in that field. I don't have this on mine. I just have the yes or no. And that allows the button for submission to show up because otherwise it won't. And then it'll be an incomplete form that's shown directly on the home page that they will be prompted to do something with. And then they'll have to go into the documents page in order to see it. OK, so that takes care of developing your client portal form, your client portal guide and your portal graphics. All right, so that's it. Now that you have your client portal guide created, then you can actually set up a page on your website for your clients to log into. What you'll need in order to start this is the embed code from your client portal settings. So let me save this document. Actually save and close. All right. And then we're going to go back to the settings. We're going to go to the portal. And what you're going to use is your embed code. Now, this embed code is very important. Most web hosting providers, whether you're using Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, I personally use WordPress, um, will allow some sort of space for you to add specialized code into your site so that this will show up. So, for example, if you go to Captivating Calligraphy's page, this is her home page. And you see in her menu, there's a client portal. When you click on that, you see her client portal login. Okay. Um, and we already got the image of the actual login with her branding on it. So armed with those two things, what you're going to go do is go back to Dubsado and you're gonna go back to templates. We're gonna to go to canned emails, right? And then you're gonna do a new canned response. And then we're gonna say, welcome to your client portal, okay? And then the subject is, your client, use the same. Or you can call this client portal welcome, a little bit shorter. And so here you're gonna say, hello, client name, because we've got smart fields. We don't have to type everyone's name out. Hello, you may say hello first name. Um, you can put whatever content you want in here. I'm just gonna type some sample text, but Again, you would create the email that you would want your clients to see.
And what you're going to do is add a link to. All right. And you, as you know, when you have links, form links, then there will be a, a color coded um, button that they can use. And then you can also say, you can also log in to your portal using the, I can say, from my website as indicated below. All right, and then you can take the image, drop this image there. Okay, you're definitely gonna make it bigger, right? So that the people can see it. Let me know if you have any questions. So of course you would, you know, copyright this in a way that's more engaging to your clientele more than I did. Um, and I'll do some more work on hers as well. So don't think that she's going to be left with this text. Um, but basically what you're going to do is save that email. So now you have a wonderful email with an image on how to log into your client portal um, and what people will find uh, once they log in. You also want to do this. If you are setting up passwords, and they're password protected for the for the portal, you want to make sure that you add the password here. So the link to the portal is one thing, but you also want to add the link to the password or the information for the password. Password to access the portal is ah, so the portal password. So that's it, that's the template for your canned email. Well, I hope you enjoyed spending this time with me going through how to update your client portal. Um, I know it seemed like a long process, but hopefully it's pretty clear of many of the tips and tricks that I use to make sure that my client portal and associated documents looked great. So if you really enjoyed the video, but felt like I don't want to do this. <laughs> I want you to do it. Then I am available to help you redesign your client portal. Right now I am offering an introductory rate for people who want to hire me to redesign their client portal, redesign their canned emails and provide them templates for additional forms as well as create the client portal guide for you. I'm available for that for $275. I have a link here to my website and the product page for that service. And if you are interested in purchasing that, then I'm available. I hope to hear from you soon. And I thank you for spending this time.